You've had your fun, Andrews. Now oh, it's time I cut you off. Babs snaps her jaws, voraciously ripping the shrimp in half. Cut to black. Title. Beached. We fade in. It's dawn. Wave laps in a weathered lifeguard chair toppled on its side. Tidewater Cove Beach Patrol stenciled on its back. Cut to a ramshackle houseboat floating into view, proudly flaunting her name, the Dirty Dingy. Inside the cabin, clothing and empty beer cans are strewn about, caps still topped with the American flag helmet, sleeps soundly next to a slender figure cloaked under a blanket. Frankie abruptly sits up. Shit. Oh, shit! Frankie painstakingly gets out of bed wearing nothing but her oversized Beach Patrol hoodie and slinks out the door. Outside the dirty dinghy, Frankie tiptoes to the edge of the deck takes a deep breath and jumps overboard. The sound of the splash causes Cap to abruptly sit up. Ready? He rises from the bed wearing nothing but the helmet and a black thong. He steps out into the houseboat's deck, squinting from the bright sun. No trace of Frankie. We reveal the dirty dinghy is actually dry blocked on cinder blocks near the edge of an inlet. A salty old fisherman holding a crab trap stares nonplussed at the sight of a grown man in a helmet and a thong. Unfazed, Cap gives a wink and a friendly nod. Oi. The fisherman shakes his head and tosses the trap into the water. Cap puts on his beach patrol windbreaker, drapes his whistle around his neck, and expertly flips on his sunglasses. He vaults over the rail and dismounts the boat, hops onto his beach cruiser, and pedals off through Tidewater Cove. The charm of the small beach town is dulled by space available and out of business signs on a few of the Main Street storefronts. But Louise's bakery is still open for business. Louise struggles trying to remove a large bag of flour from her car. Cap stops to help. Thank you, sweetheart. What are you Where's Albert? Oh, Albert. I had to let him go. Jesus, Louise. He's your son. <laughs> His mom's the next to go. I mean, once they put that superstore in and went up to the White Carver Crest, folks just stopped coming. We cut to the entrance of Cap's Beach. Cap bites around the corner, donut in mouth, carrying a box from Louise's bakery. The TCBP truck is parked at the entrance of the beach next to Reggie's ice cream truck. Reggie is crammed into a folding chair under the awning. Cap greets him with a custom handshake. How's it hanging, Reg? Have a pie. Hell yeah. That from Louise's? You know it. How's it looking out there today? Shit. It's deader than disco. Cap leans his bike against a bench with a Richmond Realty ad featuring a photo of a smiling Babs Richmond. On Babs's beach, Snake squats beneath a lifeguard chair wearing dark sunglasses and wrapped a towel around his torso. The CPR dummy sits in the chair and Cap struts up. Good morning, sweet tits. Snake's grunt is followed by the sound of a powerful stream of pee. Ah. What an incredible smell you just The sound snops, stops. Snake glares at Cap. Cap looks away and scans his beach. The sand is torn up with deep tracks. Snake climbs into the lifeguard chair and settles in next to the CPR dummy. Cap picks up a walkie talkie. Yep, Frankie, over. Have you seen her today? Uh, what's uh, supposed to mean? Cap removes his windbreaker and applies suntan lotion to his chest. <whistles> Gladys struts toward the lifeguard chair. A gold bikini glitters off her bronzed skin. My, my, looks like quite the party. Gladys, my love. Not enough action on the private beaches. Oh, please. They wouldn't know a good time if it sucked their toes. One of these days. One of these days you have to join us. Spend your invitation. I know, boo-boo. But it'll cut into my bedtime. Oh, I don't believe you're asleep that early. Who said I was sleeping? Gladys sashays past Cap and gives him a hard smack on the ass. Don't start when you can't finish, you big tease. I don't suppose you want to help me clean this up? 
Cap accepts his fate. He grabs the handle of a rake from behind the lifeguard chair. Several prosthetic pennants fastened to the rake handle shimmy across the tracks in the sand. Cap serenely grooms his beach with the dildo rake. Meanwhile, on the Sea Squall private beach, waves refract heat off the hot sand. Engines rumble in the distance. Five ATVs emerge through the haze. The riders are chiseled blonde males in their 20s, each wearing matching sunglasses and black windbreakers emblazoned with SSBP in white letters with red trim. The leader of this pack is Rob Connors, his eyes forward with icy determination. His foot soldiers ride behind in tight formation. On the back of Rob's ATV sits a young man of about 16, head hung low between rounded shoulders. Oversized Bermuda shorts showcase thin legs, dressed with tube socks and sneakers. On Cap's beach, he's nearly finished grooming when he spots the SSBP fast, fast approaching. He pokes Snag with the dildo. Snag. You got company. Rake planted firmly in the sand, Cap awaits the intruders. The riders cross through a gap in the fence separating the two beaches and stop mere inches from Cap's position. Cap unflinchingly holds his ground. Rob slides his sunglasses from his nose and surveys the beach as he dismounts his ATV. Look what you've, uh, you've done with the place, Andrew. It's got a real morning turd kind of vibe. Really. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Connors and the Sea Squall Beach Patrol. Tell me, Rob Connors, how are you like in ZSS? Official business. Cap slowly leans the dildo end of the rake towards Rob's face as he speaks, gently wiggling it as it gets closer and closer. <laughs> this dingus clearly doesn't understand the meaning of private beach. Rob smacks the weight the rake away from his face and turns his annoyance to the young man. Move along, dweeb. The young man shuffles off the ATV. Rob shoves him as he walks by. Cap drops the rake and goes nose to nose with Rob. Watch it. Rob shoves him away. The SSBP guards are ready for a fight. Snag dismounts the chair. His massive legs slam into the sand. <laughs> the SSBP settle down. Rob mounts his ATV. Glare locked on cap. You know, one of these days, your car dog won't be here to save you, okay? No, no. <laughs> Snag's bark startles the SSBP. Rob signals his riders. Let's roll! Rob's squad drive their ATVs in a circle, tearing up the beach and spraying sand everywhere. Cap salutes each of them as they drive by. The SSBP speed back to their beach. Cap checks on the dejected young man. You all right, Shuri? I don't know my name. Yeah, right now. My name? It's Shuri. Benny Shuri, and he said Shuri. What? No, uh, should be someone who wears shoes on the B. Yeah, no one's. <laughs> Don't worry about it. James Andrews. Everybody calls me Cap. And this, Uncle Manny. Hey, don't worry about those ass palms. You're cool, baby. Really? Thanks. Shuby scurries off. Snag lovingly cradles the CPR dummy and hops off the chair. <laughs> uh, where do you think you're going? Yes. Hi. I need back to talk. Shuby sits in the sand, staring blankly into the horizon. A colorfully manicured hand taps his shoulder. It's the Tidewater Cove speech badge checker, Jessica Somers. You got a badge? Hello? Are you ducking something? Uh, uh, so, um, sorry, no. Uh... Well, like, if you want to be on the speech, it's a dollar. Hey, Jimmy! What's up, Cap? How about you move the other way on this one, that's that. First one. Whatever. Uh, thanks, uh, GLP. My name is Jessica. <laughs> As she walks away, Shuby cannot take his eyes off of her. Jessica. The love-struck Shuby amuses Cap. He flops back into the lifeguard chair and takes out the walkie-talkie. Cap to Frankie, over. No answer. On Zeke's beach, he's sprawled across his lifeguard chair, legs spread wide, cigarette hanging from his lips. He leers through a pair of aviator sunglasses at a pair of woman, uh, women walking past his stand. Sup? <laughs> Captain Zeke, Frankie chauffeur work this morning. Over. That's a negatory. Over. On Boomer and Scooter's beach, the twins nest upon the lifeguard chair decorated with a tattered New Zealand flag. 
They aggressively reach for the walkie at the same time. Give it here! I got it fed. Well, I'll shove it up your hairy fern hole if you don't give it. And a piss off. Ah, oh, fuck. Scooter holds the walkie above his head. Boomer Karate chops him to the throat. He surrenders the walkie. We got eyes on her here, Cap. Over. Stubby twat! Cap checks out the swimmers in his ocean. It's not safe to leave them unattended. Shit. Hey, kid! Shuby, hey, Shuby! Yeah! You come here for a second. Hey, uh, I need a small, teeny, tiny little finger. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cap drapes this TCB windbreaker over Shuby. You're christened. Mazda. <clears throat> Shark! Shark, everybody out of the water! The few people in the ocean come running to the shore. <clears throat> Cap hands Shuby the whistle. Take this. If anyone goes near the water, you just yell shark and whistle them out. Got it? Do not let anyone in the water under any circumstance. Excellent. You can do this. Excellent. Shuby can only watch as Cap sprints down the shoreline. On Boomer and Scooter's beach, the twins perch on their chair, Boomer intently focused on the ocean. Scooter wets his finger with his mouth and slowly moves it towards Boomer's ear. I will snap that fucker off if you shove it up and shove it up your beauty. Scooter wisely withdraws. Cap runs up to the chair. Yo, Boomer, your Scooter. How my favorite Kiwis? Good as gold, Captain. Hey, Cap. Big one on tips last night, eh? You know it. Fucking legendary. <laughs> Cap spots Frankie in the ocean sitting on a surfboard. He grabs a rescue board from the sand. Might I borrow this? Oh, you're the cat, Cap. Cap takes the board and heads out toward Frankie. Scooter quickly pops his finger in his mouth and sticks it in Boomer's ear. She pummels him with a series of haymakers. Ow, ow, ow. I'm gonna tell Ma. Out in the surf, Frankie sits on her board, focused on the horizon. Cap quietly paddles beside her unnoticed. He slips off the board and disappears under the water. Frankie's focus is broken when she feels something touch her leg. Cap surfaces, nearly startling her off the board. You asshole! God, what's your deal? I don't recall giving you the day off. Yeah, well, I guess I didn't have it in me this morning. Yeah, you did. High five. Yeah, I'm not I'm doing this right now. Oh, you're not doing this right now. You seemed okay the last time when you practically dragged me off the beach. Okay, I was very drunk. And a little jealous. And an idiot. And horny. And I uh, instantly regret it. Ha! And ouch, feelings. I said I'm not doing this now. And I this. Oh, hey. You forgot these last night. Do you want them back? You want me to just add them to my collection? God, could you be any more inappropriate? Even though I can. Let me show you this weekend. Your treat. We just like the old days, we wine coolers, blanket under the stars, sand in our nooks and crannies. Grow up. Never. Cap snaps his teeth. Clearly his antics fatigue Frankie. She turns her back and paddles away, not mm -hmm. once turning around. Back on Cap's beach, a few people start to meander near the shoreline. Shuby paces near the lifeguard chair, doing his best to remain calm. He feels a sense of great relief when he sees Cap skillfully surf the rescue board in the shore. Okay, everyone, false alarm. Turns out it was just a dolphin who identified as a shark. Please return to your regular schedule. Some reactiveness. Go on, move the Brody. Nice, huh? Anyone thrown? What? No, no, no. Did you even get to use a whistle? No. Shame. She to take the whistle. Hey, if you're not doing things tomorrow, we could use a man when you around here. Okay, yeah, sure. Hmm? See you tomorrow. Shuby starts to walk away. Hey, Shuby. He turns his back toward Cap and tosses him the whistle. Keep it. Thanks. Shuby bounds up the beach. Cap climbs up to his post. We fade to the exterior of Rick's Bar, a rundown local fisherman's pub. The TCPP truck is parked outside near a sign for $5 pitchers. Inside, Cap, Sneg, Zeke, Boomer, and Scooter slug a shot of tequila. Boomer finishes first and slams her glass upside down on the table. Fuck yay! You Sheila drink like a bunch of cunts! Except you, Cat. <laughs> I got an extra round. 
Except you, Cam. You're the best, Cam. I want to have you, baby, Cam. With ninja-like reflexes, Boomer whacks Scooter in the nuts. Cap sidles up to the bar and catches the eye of the leathery bartender, Rick, and holds up two fingers. Paul Murph Murphy bursts through the door, a vein pulsates through the redness of his forehead. He spots Cap and lumbers toward him. Andrews? Uh-oh. Uh, who um, page the fun police? You completely lost your shit. Why? Did you find some? My colors. Do you have it on you right now? So many questions. Your annex have become the sand in my underwear. Well, I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Really? Captain Windmill, because Babs Richmond is on the warpath, and that's the last fucking thing I need. Oh, I'll take it easy, Mark. It's just like this thing you We got bigger fish to fry. There's a town council meeting tonight, and I need you there. Oh, sounds like a real hootenanny, but, oh, that's right, I'm allergic. Besides, I have a date tonight. Rick arrives with two pitchers of beer. And will you look here? She brought a friend. What do you say, Mark? Come on, double. Look, I shouldn't be telling you this, but we're broke. Who's broke? Us. The township. Maybe you were too busy swinging thick to notice, but lately the tourists haven't been touring around here. So, what does that mean? Until we sort it out, they're cutting all non-essentials. God. For shit's sake, Murph, you had me nervous for a second there. We're lifeguards. We're as essential as it gets. Are you? Aren't we? This isn't just about you, dipshit. Make sure you're at the meeting tonight. Murph hustles out the door, ignoring the other guards. Cap returns to the table, pitchers in each hand, thoughts lingering on Murph's news. Murph on the red? What? Uh, no, 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 it's nothing. You know what? I think I'm going to call it early tonight. No! <laughs> oh. Cap has resigned himself to leave when a pair of attractive young women in their 20s, Darlene and Laura, enter the bar. They're followed by Gianna, who is rocking a tight knee on top crop. She spies Cap and shoots a flirtatious look. Cap weighs his options and decides to return to his mate. You know what? Maybe just... One more. Yeah! The guards clink their glasses as Karma Chameleon by Culture Club blares in the background. The guards and girls now competing in a lively game of quarters. Gianna rolls a coin off her breasts, bouncing it perfectly into a cup. Cap throws back a shot. Next thing we know, Cap is on stage singing karaoke. There's a love in your eyes all the way. If I listen to your lies, what would you say? As the evening continues, the guards and girls are gathered in Rick's parking lot around garbage cans aligned in triangle format. Boomer serves a volleyball into one of the cans. Gianna delivers a beer for Cap to chug. Fade to a bonfire roaring on the beach. A boombox blasts music while the crew dance, drink, and pass around a joint. Gianna seductively blows a puff of smoke in Cap's face. So... Cat and Windmill. I seem to remember you saying something about skinny dipping. Gianna takes off her top and runs into the ocean. Laura and Darlene follow. <clears throat> well, I want to disappoint the fans. Cap strips down naked, puts on his American flag helmet, and makes his way to the water. Scooter jumps up and drops his pants. Let's do this! By the group frolic in the ocean. <laughs> Gianna swims up and puts her arms around Cap. Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> the meeting. Shit! Cap sprints out of the water. Hey! Shit, shit, shit! Cap runs past Snag and clumsily grabs a handful of clothes as he sprints off the beach. Shit, 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 shit. Snag shrugs, drops his drawers, and lumbers bare ass toward the water, carrying the naked CPR dummy at his side. <laughs> We cut to the interior of the Tidewater Cove Municipal Building. A smattering of locals, including Murph, Reggie, and Louise, attend a town council meeting. Councilman Samuel is flanked on the dais by Councilwoman, uh, Councilman Larry and Councilwoman Ellen. A vote on the motion to cancel the free Parrot Head concert? Aye. Nay. Aye. Motion carried. The gavel strikes the block. 
A somber Larry removes a parrot head cap from his head. Samuel looks over the agenda. Even with these cuts, we're still at a significant deficit. Which brings us to the beach patrol. A motion is on the floor to dissolve the patrol, saving approximately $25,000 to the budget. Would anyone here like to speak on their behalf? I will, Councilman. The floor recognizes Paul Murphy, town manager. I don't see how we can leave the beaches unattended. I know they're not as crowded this year, but they're still an important part of our community. A very good reason, Mr. Murphy. Babs Richmond is standing at the podium holding a folder neatly labeled privatization proposal. Hello, Babs Richmond, proprietor of Richmond Realty and president of the Island Committee for Economic Development. The floor recognizes Ms. Richmond. Thank you, Councilman. And I agree completely. Beaches are a very important part of the community, but James Andrews and the rest of his circus freaks are an atrocity. Yeah, well, they get the job done. You know better than a swim at your own risk sign. No, luckily I have a higher quality solution. We close the beaches to the general public. We remove the taxpayer burden of a beach patrol, and then the homeowners hire and pay the new staff. You're talking about privatizing the beaches! It's simply better. Better, my black ass. First is the beaches. Next thing you know, everything will be Burger Kings and Dairy Queens. She's trying to kill our town. Kill it? I am trying to revive it. <laughs> Private beaches mean better property value. Better property value means better homeowners. And better homeowners mean better businesses. I ask you, doesn't Tidewater Cove deserve better? Look, Councilman, Reggie sort of has a point. How long before we're all non essential? This is bigger than just the beach patrol. Cat bursts wildly into the chambers. Objection! Wearing nothing but a neon crop top, a thong bikini bottom, and the American flag helmet. <laughs> oh, for the shit's sake. Oh, your mustache, Murph, I got this. I object. To what? To that top with those pants. Hello! <laughs> Larry, how's the boat, Alan? Here's a girl softball team that's looking good this year. <clears throat> Mr. Andrews. Your minutes, please. If I may. Sure, the town needs money. I get it. We all need something. Like a beach. A beach needs lifeguards. A beach without lifeguards is like... It's like Ronnie without Nancy. Like Andrew Ridgely without George Michael. Like Jimmy Buffett without his margarita. <laughs> Tidewater Cove is a town built on the backs of pirates and bootleggers. They didn't worry about budgets. No, they saw what they wanted and they went for it. And I, for one, will not be smirched the spirit of our ancestors. I, for one, will not deny this town its margarita. <laughs> Mr. Andrews, unless you plan to pay for it with a chest of gold or barrels of moonshine, the fact remains we only have enough funds until end of the month. We have no choice but to examine Ms. Richmond's proposal. Motion considered? Aye. Hey, no. Aye. Oh. Aye. Motion passed. <laughs> the gavel strikes reverberates through the night. We fade to the cabin of the dirty dinghy. Cap lies in bed, deep in thought. A half-empty bottle of rum in his hand. There's a knock. Frankie stands in the doorway. Hey. I'm not in the mood. Actually, I... I need to talk to you. I've, I've been giving this a lot of thought, and um, there's, there's no good way to say this, but uh, I'm leaving. I, you know, I, I know that was blunt, but I figured I owed it to both of us to just come out and say it outright. I, like, I don't want you to think it was about last night, okay? If anything, I'm, I'm really glad we did that. Like, like one last hurrah. 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 
Look, this isn't easy, all right? I wasn't sure I was even coming back this year. It's, it's been a blast, but it's like starting to all feel the same. Like, we keep doing the same shit over and over again, except each time, it gets a little less fun. It's kind of sometimes. And I feel like, for me, now is that time. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's that's it. That that's all you have to say. Uh, thanks for the fucking memories. Really, Frankie? Oh, you want to do this now? I just found out that the town is broke. That they're going to shut down the squad, and I'm going to lose my beach. Wait, wait, wait. The town is broke. Jesus, did you hear what I just said? Is there? I'm not going to be a lifeguard anymore. When? Next month. Is there anything you can do? Was there anything I could do? I get, do 25 grand I can borrow? How much? Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Did you tell the guys? No. Hey, you have to tell them. I will, all right, all right. After the game tomorrow, I just need, I just need a minute to try to sort this all out. Can we raise the money? What? The, the 25 grand you said we have till the end of the month. Can we raise the money? What's all this we stuff, Francine? You know what? Mm -hmm. Last I checked, you were bailing, so you know what? See ya. You're an asshole. Frankie storms out to the desk. Cap follows her. Frankie, wait. I'm an asshole, okay? But how would you feel if you just found out that you were not essential? Yeah. I'm familiar with the notion. Come on, Frankie. I can't let it end this way. You're gonna leave anyway, right? I mean, so it's a few more weeks. Come on, a, a real last hurrah. You want me to stay? Come on, Frank. Say it. Oh, so we're doing this? Yeah, yeah, no. we're doing this. Go on, say it. I need you. I'm sorry, what? I, I couldn't fucking hear you. I said I need you. Okay? Happy? I need you to help me figure this out. Don't go. Hi. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Give it to the end of the month. But it's for the squad, okay? And, and and if we're gonna do this, you need to leave the lamps at home. I don't even know what that's. Yeah, yeah, you know exactly what it means, Captain Lee Mill. Oh, right, right, right. Say no more, I'll be on my very best. We are here. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I can't believe I let you talk me into these things. Yeah, well, you know, I better I talk you out of things. Pretty much your clothes. Yeah, don't don't make this hard. Yeah, you're making this hard. I'm talking about my penis. Yeah. No? Mm -hmm. Not forgetting to tie the helmet? Absolutely not. Take a second. Horizontal level? Frankie hops off the boat. I'm already having second thoughts. Come on, Frankie. I'm up for it. I'm talking about my penis. <laughs> a salty old fisherman holding a crab trap stares nonplussed at Cap. Evening. The fisherman shakes his head and tosses the trap into the water. Splash. We fade to Cap's beach the following morning. Shuby is finishing up grooming the beach. He plants the dildo rake into the sand and admires his handiwork. Cap arrives and surveys his now tidy beach. Hey, Shuby. Did you do this? Good job, buddy. But fortunately, I have some bad news. Oh, sorry. Here. It's, it's, it's no, 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 I can always use someone to clean up after the that goes in that, yeah, it's, it's always make that happen category. It's just, uh, it appears that we have a bit of a uh, fiscal situation and I cannot offer you compensation. He said no fundage for the shootster. It's okay. I don't care about money. Wow. Trust must be awesome. That's not it. Hmm? Sugar mama? She got sugar sister. 
<laughs> I want you to make me cool. <laughs> Shoot me. Who says you're not cool? Everybody. <laughs> no. Unacceptable. Step in my office. Cap and Shuby climb into the lifeguard chair. I don't know, Shuby, it seemed pretty cool to me. So the question is, why don't you already know that? Shuby. Shuby. Shuby doesn't hear the question. He's distracted by Jessica checking badges near the shoreline. Hey, jailbait. Shuby turns bright red as Jessica approaches the chair. Jeez, Cap, take a chill pill and stop calling me jailbait. I am almost 17. I'm basically as old as you. Wow, almost 17. Shuby, how, how old are you? 16. 16? That's, that's almost 17. Almost so, already so much in common. Mm -hmm. Uh, hey, you. Where is your badge? Oh, where are my manners? Jailbait? My new partner, Shuby, Shuby, be Jill. Jessica. You don't need no stinking badges. Whatever. It's your beach. <clears throat> so, what's your deal? I, I have... Be a bit of this watch. What? No, 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 no. I... He's the lost guy to begin. What? He is He's like... down with the beef. What? Whatever. See you at the game. We'll be there. Jessica departs. Shuby wants to vomit. Did great work there, Shu, really. Top notch. You can only use a little help sometimes, you know, so lesson number one, day of sun, you gotta be steady. If you wanna be cool, then just be cool. If she thinks you're cool, cool. If she doesn't cool, what matters is that you're cool. We cool? I think so. We cool. Lesson two. Just say no. But but they're they're cool means they're cool, right? Totally. But not on the beach, home slice. Never on the beach. Not two words anymore. Shuby expeditiously kicks off his sneakers and socks. <laughs> Lesson three, game plan. So what's the goal here, Shuby? Fish supper? <laughs> Shuby! I did not thank you for a backdoor man. No, 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 no. I, you know, mini golf, mini golf, like a date or something. <laughs> Oof. Uh, Lesson four, mini golf? Not cool. Really? Yeah. I hate to be the one to break it to you. <laughs> Okay, okay, uh, what about the boardwalk? No. No, 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 no. Hell no. What's wrong with the boardwalk? Alright, look. That one breaks down into four parts. Here, Tywater Cove is a fisherman's town. There's Sea Squall, old money, even worse, new money. Harbor Crest is pretty much a tourist town. And then, then there's the boardwalk. So, wretched, high, scum, you know, you gotta be pretty desperate to go to the boardwalk. All right, one second. Murph dries up in the TCB pickup truck. Cap hops off the stand to meet Murph at the truck. So? So if you raise the money, you can stay. Really? Yeah. Samuel didn't want to go for it. Seems like you still have some friends on the council. <laughs> this is great news. Listen up, dipshit. <laughs> I stuck my neck out for you again. This is your last chance. Murph, Murph, Murph. You're the best. You're an idiot. <laughs> Murph drives off. Cap bounds back to the stand. Okay, where were we? Lesson number five. In the living room inside Babs Richmond's beachfront home, Babs stares at Cap through her binoculars while caressing the neckline of her flawless kimono. A toilet flushes. Councilman Samuel emerges from the bathroom wearing a wide open kimono way too small for his frame. <laughs> He pours himself a martini. You're obsessed. Attention to detail is not an obsession, it's a virtue. Mm -hmm. You got any olives? I am trying to create something here, Councilman, and that foundation is built on people and process. I have the right process, they are the wrong people. <laughs> They're just lifeguards. They are blight. And they're gone at the end of the month. There's no way they raised that money. What money? <clears throat> well, 
Larry and Ellen told them if they raised the 25 grand by the end of the month, they could keep their jobs. What? You utterly useless buffoon! How could you let this happen? Gee whiz, lighten up, Babs. Andrews is a screw up. Forget about him. Hey, what do you say to round two? I'd say you get out of my house and go back to your wife. Babs returns to her binoculars. We fade to the beach later in that afternoon. The sun has shifted from the ocean to the bay. Shuby walks up to the shoreline alongside Cap, absorbing his gospel. Okay, let's see. Lesson 95. Never make eye contact while eating a banana. Lesson 96. Always have shades. Protect your eyes and eye. Much for dramatic effect. Lesson 97. Beach volleyball. On the beach volleyball court, Boomer and Scooter swear, uh, square off against Snag and Zeke while Frankie and Jessica warm up on the sideline. The CPR dummy is positioned on a beach chair wearing a referee jersey. Yeah, let's go, you fuck knuckles. Yeah, you fuck knuckles. <laughs> real original sis. Fuck you, you fucking fuck knuckle. This one's coming right up your ass. Snag serves the ball between the twins who nearly collide as it screams past them. Snag and Zeke celebrate. That was my ball, Drongo! The twins start a shoving match. Boomer feigns a punch. Scooter throws up his hands to protect his face. Boomer whacks him in the nuts. A frustrated Scooter kicks over the CPR dummy. Snag furiously runs to pick her up. He gives Scooter the death stare. Terribly sorry, mate. I, I, I was panicking for a bit there and I lost my head. I assure you, I won't happen again. Snag, don't kill Scooter. Too much paperwork. Afternoon, ladies. Hey, who's again? Frankie, this is Shuby, my new protege. Oh, sorry to hear that. Oh, yes. And Shelby, remember Shuby? Hey. Let's go for us. Snuggle Bus, you and Zeke with the twins. Come on, Shuby, here with us. Cat tosses the volleyball to Shuby. Show him who's the boss. Oh, I know this. It's Tony Danza. Yo, Adrian, eh? Let's walk you, you twop. You're a twat! Scoop, uh, Shuby looks up to Cap for direction. <laughs> Cap silently mouths, be cool. Shuby takes a deep breath, tosses the ball in the air, and strikes it with all his might, slamming it directly into the back of Jessica's head. Ow! What the hell? Oh my god, I'm sick! Oh, sorry. It's cool. I'm fine. Let's just play? Cap walks Shuby back to position and rubs his slumping shoulders. Come on. Look on the bright side. She definitely got her attention. You should be. Hey, listen to me. This is very important. Lesson 98. Meet the moment. Shuby trusts in what Cap is saying. They get into positions. Zeke serves the ball to Frankie, who bumps it to Cap, who sets it slightly out of reach of a wide-eyed Shuby, who instinctively dives for the ball, tapping it over the net for a point. There it is! Jessica helps Shuby off the sand. Nice. A ray of confidence shines upon Shuby. Cap congratulates him with a high five and mouths, that was cool. The deep rumble of engines interrupt the moment. Rob and his SSBP foot soldiers roll up to the game on their ATVs. Well, well, well. Look what the syringe hide washed in. Hmm. <laughs> Poor guy went up, really? <laughs> Rob leers at Jessica. What's up, freak? She's 16, you skis. And hey, if there's grass on the field, play ball, right? Gross. Hey! Shuby steps towards Rob, but Cap stops him. Bring it on, Urkel. What do you want, Connors? Rob struts around and scopes his surroundings. <clears throat> Rob, you know, this beach. I always loved this beach. I still can't believe that Murphy put you in charge of it. What a fucking joke. You know what, but in the end, I guess it's, you know, it's fitting. I'm in ski, ski squall, and you're, you're the captain of a, a second ship. Get lost, douchebag. Oh, oh, no, how sweet, how sweet cat needs to be arrested. You know, Frankie, if you, um, if you ever want to make the walk of shame in a, in a nice neighborhood, I think you remember where I live, right? Do you remember the address? Fuck you. 
Wow. I can't believe I let you suck my cock with that mouth. Oh, you fucker! Frankie takes a run at Rob, but is held back by Snag. And Boomer. And Scooter. And Cap. Hey, 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 forget him, forget him. All right? Let's just play. Frankie pulls away. She's still angry, but has decided not to resort to violence. Cap grins and exchanges glances with Frankie and Snag. They have an understanding. Snag serves the ball to Frankie, who bumps to Cap, who sets the ball back to Frankie for a fierce spike, smack into Rob's face. He yelps in pain and holds his bloody wow. nose. Fuck you, stupid bitch! Yeah. <laughs> a shoving match breaks out between the beach patrols, but is quickly extinguished when Snag collars most of the SSBP. Rob seethes. He knows he can't win this battle. You fucking... Losers, you know, you're lucky you're out of here at the end of the month. Cap? What's he saying? Oh, oh, oh. You mean Captain Windmill didn't tell you that you're all, you're all getting the boosh. Yeah, yeah, new slash dick weeds. You tell? Yeah, it's four, okay? You're all losers. And oh man, I can't. Mm, I can't believe I was the one that got to tell you all. <laughs> Rob cackles with Woo! glee. Before he and the SSBP mm. depart, they drive in a circle, carving deep tracks in the sand. Cap turns to face his exasperated squad. Uh, team meeting? We cut to inside the Tidewater Cove Municipal Garage. The squad is clearly agitated. The checks, man. What about the checks? Yeah, yeah, well, I can't go back to New Zealand. I'm a wanted woman. Guys, <laughs> please, guys, listen, look. I know things seem bad. It's bloody fucked is what it is. Yeah, look, 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 what, look what they've done to Snag. Snag stands in the back of the room, arms crossed and head down. Since when do we give up so easy? Uh, all the time, actually. Come on, guys. <laughs> this isn't just our job. It's our... It's a way of life. Our way of life. Are we just gonna... Are we just gonna let them take that from us? No way, dude. And we can wave the white flag. And we can surrender our beach, let the bad guys win. Or... Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 Everyone is buying in except Snag. Cap gently lifts his chin to meet Snag's doleful eyes. A single tear streams down his cheek. Cap gently wipes it away. Snag goes, but... It's gonna be okay. Now, who are we? TCBP? Say it like you mean it! TCBP! I said it along me! TCBP! What does TCBP do? Take care of Only he is my friend! Come on, guys! We can do this! We just need to... We just need some ideas! Come on, think! Uh, we could donate blood. Or spin! <laughs> I've done both. Oh. What about the annual lifeguard race? There's, there's a cash prize, guys. No, 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 wait, Team Elite, it's 10 grand, we need 25. Plus, we get a chance against Sea Squall. Rob trains those dips that are gonna drop it. Okay, fine. Um, oh, what about a music festival? Oh, my Bob Geldof? I think. Oh, Donna, oh, what are you doing? No, As the squad argues, Shuby can't help but notice Jessica is worried. Just be cool. We should have a tricky train! Tricky? Train? Tricky train! Uh, what the fuck is a tricky train? You know? A tricky train! Say tricky train again and I'll wrap you in a bag. It's like part raffle, part auction. A bolt of inspiration strikes Cap. He grabs Shuby by the face and plants a kiss on his cheek. Shuby? You are a genius. Shuby beams. Jessica smiles. We cut to a flyer taped to an iron gate that reads, Tonight Only, Lifeguard Auction. A well-manicured hand rips it down. Babs Richmond boils. She crumples the paper and ponders her next move. We cut to the inside of Rick's bar the night of the auction. A smattering of patrons nurse their regular drinks at their regular seats. 
Gianna, Laura, and Darlene stir at a table. Near a makeshift stage, Scoober, Scooter nervously bites his nails while Boomer bounces up and down like a fighter before the bell. Zeke lights one cigarette after another and fixes his hair. Snag sits quietly holding the CPR dummy on his lap. Frankie takes the stage with the microphone. Welcome to the first annual Tidewater Cove Lifeguard Auction to help save our squad. Her voice echoes through the near empty bar. Cap nervously paces back and forth. Is this it? This can't be it. Where is everyone? I want to buy a lifeguard. <laughs> She's charging the right? Who's working the door? Outside of Rick's entrance, Shuby and Jessica sit in awkward silence. Shuby opens his mouth to speak, but decides against it. Meanwhile, back inside, the girls bang their glasses on the table and start to get rowdier by the second. Cap puts on his game face and takes the stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the TCBP Lifeguard Auction. Woohoo! Our first card. Cap is distracted by the opening of the front door, hoping for a miracle. In strides Babs, instantly pleased by the lack of turnout. She locks eyes firmly on Cap. <clears throat> Our first guard is a local boy who enjoys fishing, brown liquor, and naming sexual positions. Give it up for Zeke. <laughs> Woohoo! Strides Macho to the stage, playing directly to the table of girls, thrusting his hips in their general direction. <laughs> It's for charity. Do I get forty dollars? Thirty. I'll give you one dollar. <laughs> the laughter from the girls makes Zeke want to disappear. Cap can see the ship going down. Guys, guys, look at this specimen. The wedding bid gets him for a whole evening. Do I hear ten dollars? Should I pay my nephew twice that to scrape barnacles off my boat? I'll give you ten bucks. I'll do twenty. No. I, I am not scraping barnacles. Okay, fine. We have twenty. Twenty going once. Twenty going twice. Cap takes a deep breath, resigned to the fate of the evening. Suddenly, the door flies open and in pours Gladys with a dozen energetic senior ladies and one flamboyant older gentleman, and they're ready to party. Fifty dollars! The new arrivals breathe life into the bar. That's what I'm talking about! I got fifty. Do I hear one hundred? Come on, gals. He's one part Aquaman, one part Barbara Man. Zeke begins to feel more confident. He strikes a pose. An older woman waves a hundred dollar bill in the air. Ooh, one hundred dollars! Yes! <laughs> and I two hundred! Show what they're getting, Zeke. Zeke enthusiastically flounces across the stage. Coco, the flamboyant older gentleman, pushes his way to the front. Two hundred! Two hundred! Going once! Going twice! So to the gentleman in the front row! Energy surges through the crowd as Coco climbs on stage with Zeke, who kindly tries to resist. But it doesn't seem to face Coco, who takes him by the hand and leads him away. Looks like he'll be scraping barnacles after all. <laughs> Cap and Frankie are amazed. This might actually work. Babs is vexed. This is not how it was supposed to go. And while inside is getting wild, outside remains tame. Awkward. Jessica seeks to change that and pulls a pint of peppermint schnapps from her bag. Hey, check this out. I stole it from my dad's liquor cabinet. You want some? I don't know. I'm supposed to be in charge of the money. Come on, don't be lame up. Oh. You, sir? No. Oh, that's a bummer. Serving's rad. Uh, sorry. So, like, what's your deal? What do you mean? I mean, like, <laughs> Why are you here? How'd you wind up here? My mom thought I needed a change from the city, so she took a job on the island for the summer. But I guess I wandered on the wrong beach, because next thing I know, Cat hands me a whistle and starts screaming, Shark! Oh, yeah, the Brody could do that. Yeah, well now I'm helping sell lifeguards to the Golden Girls, so... <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's my deal. That's so random. 
Like, you think that's going on inside of me? Like, I don't know. Still playing bingo or whatever it is old people do. Inside Rick's, the booze is flowing through the rambunctious crowd. Even the locals are into it. Rick can barely keep up from the behind the bar. Gladys pays for another round, and Rick rings the bell. Over the register, everyone is having a blast. Except for Babs. On stage, Cap and Scooter continue the auction. So, the lovely lady read for $250. The boy wondered from down yonder. Congratulations. One of the particularly older senior ladies hands Cap a fistful of money and takes Scooter by the arm, shaking her cane in victory. Cap brings the money to Frankie, who puts it in a lockbox full of cash. Not over yet, big guy. Frankie snatches the microphone from Cap. Okay, ladies, it's time for the evening's grand prize. You know him, and for some reason you still love him. Captain Windmill himself, James Andrews! Woo! Cap gets a kick out of Frankie's introduction and struts on stage. Much to the crowd's delight, gyrates his hips. All right, let's uh, let's start the bidding at, um, I don't know, one dollar? One hundred dollars. Two hundred. Two fifty. Two fifty, going once. Gianna and her friends dig furiously through their purses, tossing money on the table. Um, Three hundred dollars and... Fifty-six cents. Step aside, sweetie. This here is top shelf. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars going once. Five hundred going twice. One thousand dollars. What? Oh. Glass for one thousand dollars. <laughs> While the party rages on inside the bar, outside, Shuby and Jessica sit quietly. About half the pint of schnapps is gone. This is so lame. Oh, I can't believe that they have us sitting out here like children. Come here. Hey, you're not wearing your sneakers. Huh? Oh, yeah. Sneakers are, sneakers are for tourists. <laughs> so random. Hey, I'm gonna book. You wanna come? Yeah. Wait. No, I mean, I, I want to, but Cap told me to stay at the door. Whatever. Later. She walks away. A conflicted Shuby vacillates between his post and his possibility. Hey, wait! Jessica stops and turns. I think you're really pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so random. Shuby's heart is warmed as he watches her walk away. Inside is exploded into a full-blown bacchanal. Scooter lies shirtless on the bar while the old woman who purchased him does a shot out of his belly button. Off to the side, Cap and Frankie share a picture and a lively conversation with Gladys. Gladys, you are a national treasure. Oh, please. I'm just some old broad who owns you for a night. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have to see a lady about a horse. <laughs> Gladys chugs her beer, slaps Cap hard on the ass, and strides off. Babs appears from the shadows. Bravo, Mr. Andrews. Bravo. Oh, hi, Babsy. Having fun? I know your type. Overconfident with the delusion of being in control. Soaking up attention in a futile attempt to wash away your insecurities. <laughs> you want people to think you're some kind of a hero, hmm? when really you're nothing but a scared little boy whose only interest is self-preservation. Hmm? Is she flirting with me? <laughs> yeah, I think she's flirting. <laughs> Enjoy your beach while you can. But I warn you, if you get in my way, I will make things very, very She seems nice. Babs makes a hasty exit. Gladys returns and notices Babs scurrying out the door. What's her deal? Some folks just can't handle the good life. That woman needs a good, deep, Dickin, just right up in there. Rick vigorously rings the bell. Music plays as we transition to daytime on Cap's Beach. Snag pounds a handwritten sign in the sand that reads lifeguard aerobics, $20. Cap and Frankie lead a group of mostly older women and Coco decked out in colorful workout clothes. Yeah, John wrote those hips. Two more times. 
Thanks for coming out, everyone. I leave you in Frankie's gentle yet surprisingly masculine hands. Cap checks out another area of the beach where a sign reads, Dizzy Bat Race, Enter to Win. A small crowd is gathered around a pair of baseball bats. Zeke, cigarette hanging from his lips, rubs Boomer's shoulders as she cracks her neck back and forth. A yuppie hands Shuby 20 bucks, which she puts in a bucket full of cash. Hey, uh, who wants this? Fuck off, <laughs> Zeke blows his whistle. Boomer and the yuppie put the bats to their foreheads while the crowd cheers them on. Boomer watches smirk as the yuppie takes two steps then stumbles, face planting into the sand. Boomer easily moseys across the finish line. Shuby runs past a line of customers at Reggie's ice cream truck. Reggie hustles to keep up with the demand. Shuby hands the cash over to Jessica who colors in a hand-painted thermometer that reads Save Our Squad. The red surpasses $5,000. We cut to inside of Rick's bar, which is nearly full. Rick has hired an additional bartender to keep up with the demand. Suddenly, a man is tossed through the air. Then another. <laughs> then another. Snag, dressed in wrestling spandex, menacingly paces a kiddie pool full of jello. A physically fit male patron tosses a handful of bills into a bucket and enters the pool. Snag pulls a luchador mask over his face. He effortlessly tosses the man aside, splattering jello on Gianna and her friends. Gianna gives Cap a frisky look and licks the jello off her finger. This does not amuse Frankie. Cap has the microphone. Let's hear it for Snag! 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 Two minutes to win it. That's all you have. The last against this beast of the beach. $100 wins you $1,000. Gladys appears from the crowd in skin tight spandex. <laughs> she hands Cap a fistful of cash and steps into the ring. Let's get it on, big boy. <laughs> Cut to Cap's Beach. It's a beautiful day. The beach is actually a little crowded. A small plane flies across a clear blue sky, pulling a banner, TCB fundraiser today. From her living room, Babs fumes as she watches. She mashes a shrimp in her fist. We cut to Main Street, where the fundraiser thermometer, now over $10,000, is affixed to the Welcome to Tidewater Cove sign. Cars, bicycles, and pedestrians cruise down the once dormant road. Shuby and Jessica ride bikes, pulling carts filled with pie boxes from Louise's Bakery. The SSBP guards approach on their ATVs. Rob swerves at Jessica, running her off the road and upending her cart. Shuby hops off his bike and sprints to Jessica's aid. She's okay, but there are pies everywhere. Douchebags! The SSBP guards speed off laughing. Cut to Cat's Beach, where a sign reads, Unlimited Pies, $100. Boomer leaps onto to the screen, her wild eyes framed with thick red war paint. <laughs> People covered in filling fall victim to Boomer's rampage. Brimming with pie lust, she winds up for her next target until she realizes it's Cap. She hesitates, giving Scooter the right moment to drop in and slam her in the face with a pie. Fuck, I'm gonna rip your fucking bullets and shove them into your eyes, fuckers! Boomer chases her brother, looking for revenge. Cap peels off some money from a wad of cash and hands it to Louise, who gratefully pinches his cheeks. Frankie struts over holding a pie, eyeing Cap up. Cap smiles nervously, then sprints off. Frankie chases after him. Later that night, Shuby and Jessica stealthily run up to a window. Are you sure you want to do this? Absolutely. Inside a municipal garage, Shuby falls through an open window. Ah, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> he dusts himself off and smiles wide when he sees the prize. Yeah. Uh, inside Rick's bar, uh, yeah, right. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we cut to outside Rick's bar where a lineup waits at the door. Inside the bar is packed. Rick has added a third bartender to keep up with the demand. Frankie sits at the table with two frat boys. Each have a full pitcher of beer in front of them. Money is piled at the center. Cap blasts his whistle and the trio chug their pitchers. Frankie wins easily. She's gathering the money from the table when Shuby bursts into the bar, frantically trying to get Cap's attention. Cut to outside of Rick's bar. Cap is smiling ear to ear while Shuby and Jessica proudly showcase Rob's ATV sitting in the parking lot. This gives Cap an idea. Next, a rambunctious crowd waving fistfuls of cash surround Cap atop the ATV wielding a baseball bat. Shuby and Jessica are taking money holding a cardboard sign, $20 per hit. Cap winds up and brings down the hammer. Cut to black. 
The montage ends. Fade up inside Sea Squall's municipal garage. Rob, whistling a jaunty tune, opens the garage door. His eyes widen with rage when he sees his heavily damaged ATV. Andrews! Outside the Tidewater Cove Municipal Garage, the guards are finishing up a charity car wash. Cat playfully sprays Frankie with the hose. She soaks him with a soapy sponge. Shuby sees this and playfully sprays Jessica with the hose. Right in the eye. Oh, oh God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Shuby rushes over to help. This time, Jessica is okay with the attention. The last car pays Zeke, who hands the money to Cap. That's a little over $500 today, man. Wow. Shh. That's less than I thought. Frankie colors the fundraiser thermometer, bringing the total to a new milestone. It's still $15,000. And it's still short. We need something big. Okay, well, what about a trivial trivia contest? Or um, oh, a fun one? Maybe a, a volleyball contest? A convertible rolls up to Cap. Hey, excuse me, where's the Parrothead concert this weekend? Uh, sorry, buddy. It's been canceled. Oh, bummer. Before the convertible can pull away, Cap is struck by an idea and chases him down. Hey, wait, 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 wait! Actually, it's back on. Yeah, it's bigger than ever. This Saturday night on the beach, spread the word. What was that about? We're going to put a music festival. Good idea, right? Seriously? Hey, why didn't you think of that? Frankie gives Cap a light wrap to his balls, doubling him over. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> it's a new day. Festive music plays while people wait online at the entrance to Cap's Beach. Scooter is taking a $5 cover charge while Boomer stamps hands. Boy, you had ink. Boomer takes a closer look at the stamp. Scooter slaps her hand, causing her to stamp her own forehead. <laughs> On the beach, the band Parrothead plays on the makeshift stage next to the fundraising thermometer, which is now just shy of $20,000. It's a lively crowd. Councilman Larry bobs to the music. Louise and Reggie are among the local vendors selling their goods to enthusiastic families. The TCBP guards are also in the spirit. A cigarette hangs from Zeke's mouth as he runs a cotton candy machine. Snag paints a masterpiece on a child's face. Cap stares uneasy at the thermometer, too preoccupied to notice Jessica leads Shuby to the dance floor. Murph bounds up and slaps Cap on the back. Not bad, Andrews. <clears throat> not bad at all. You know what? Might not be such a dipshit after all. Yeah. Somebody's jumping. Sorry, the twins? Yes, another 500 for getting close. Close enough. Jeez, would you chill? You chill, Frankie. Time's running out. We're still down five grand. Hey, look around. It hasn't been like this in years. You can take a minute to enjoy it. I'm not gonna lose my beach. Their attention takes a sharp turn to the sound of annoyed shouts and approaching engines. <laughs> Rob and the SSBP part the crowd, driving their damaged ATVs towards Cap. Cap sees Rob is out for blood and acts quickly to deflect. He jumps to the stage and takes the microphone. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Karen Head. <laughs> Give a warm welcome to Rob Connors and the Sea Squad Beach Patrol. The ATVs come to a stop at the stage. Rob ferociously whips a broken rearview mirror at Cap, nearly hitting him. If anyone wasn't paying attention, they are now. We want to talk to you, Andrews. What in the <laughs> holy hell, Connors? Are you trying to kill everyone? No. No, actually, just this far. <laughs> Get back to your beach before I call the cops. <laughs> once again, you know, once again, little Robbie here needs some rescuing. You know, I say that we, uh, why don't we settle this once and for all, okay? Just me, just me and you. What? I'm Uno. <laughs> what is this, Jakarta? Can I fight you? <laughs> Brace me. <clears throat> what? Brace me. That's the paddle. I don't know, right here, right now. You need what, uh, five thousand dollars? What, like buy a banana or something? <laughs> One of Rob's squad hands him a checkbook. Rob writes a check, rips it out, and folds it up. I'm willing to bet five k just to prove what a piece of shit you really are. Oh, Rob Connors, everyone. He's also available for children's parties. <laughs> Captain Windmill, well, here's your chance. 
here's your chance to be the hero that you think that you are. I can do uh I can just take it. Oh. <laughs> you can do it. Come on, Cap! Come on, Cap. Alright, uh, who here? Who here wants to see a race? Huh? Yeah. 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 Sue's squad. They show their support, hoping their captain won't back down. Except Frankie. She shakes her head, begging with her eyes for him not to do it. But Cap has already decided. Let's do this. Ooh. Cut to the entrance of the beach, where Cap yanks the rescue board off the back of his TCBP truck. Frankie shadows him. You can't be serious. It's a trap. He's trying to humiliate you. I don't need you to rescue me, Frankie. You know he wins a tournament every year. You can't beat him. Oh, hey, thanks for the pep talk. You don't have to do this. We can do another fundraiser. Ask for an extension. We'll think of something. Please, please, don't put it in this way. You don't get it! Okay? You're not from here. This is always just a, a summer thing for you. You, you come in in June, you live in your parents' beach house, you have your fun, and then come September, you go back to your, like, my life? I get to stay on this island and work on the freezing pool docks or the fishing boats or, 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 or whatever other shitty job is available that week because I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. Just counting down the days until a few months every year that I get to do this. This? This is what I look for. This, this isn't about you. It's bigger than that. It, it's bigger than some dumb job. Right. Look, that's how you feel, Princess? What are you still doing here? Yeah, you know what? To the beach where a tense crowd has gathered near the shoreline. Cap and Rob have their rescue boards and are ready to race. The remaining TCBB squad encourage their captain. Murph has his doubts. Cap had better know what he's doing. Cap scans the beach. Frankie is nowhere to be seen. He meets Rob's gaze. Rob is confident and focused, and Cap blinks first. Gianna steps in between them, a whistle dangling from her lips. It's all on the line, and Cap feels the pressure. The whistle sounds and they're off. The race is closer than expected. As they round the marker, he kicks at Cap, trying to knock him from the board. Cap falls behind, but a big swell is coming. Cap and Rob go for the same wave. Rob catches it, bumping into Cap and knocking him into the sea. Rob reaches the beach victorious, while Cap is forced to swim after his rescue board. Rob celebrates wildly with his squad, while the crowd ambles off the beach. Cap walks through the swash, dragging behind his board, while Rob mercilessly taunts him by swinging his hips. Murph, uh, Murph makes sure to show uh, that he's disappointed at Cap as he exits. Cap rejoin, rejoins his stunned squad. You almost had it, Cap. Oh, yeah. Fuck that prick. Yeah. Cap, we're out 5,000 bucks. We only got a couple days left. What about the chicks? What are we gonna do, <laughs> man? We dissolve to nighttime at the boardwalk. Pleasure Island is a dizzying arena of disreputable indulgence. Blinking lights and flashing neon signs. Children screaming. Bells ring and carnies bark. The smell of fried dough and dracar noir permeate the sea air. Cap leads Shuby, Snag, Zeke, Boomer, and Scooter into Richie's t-shirt emporium. As the squad makes their way through a sea of neon novelty clothing, they're closely monitored by a sketchy employee who leers from behind his newspaper. You guys wait here? Come with me. Cap knocks a coded knock on a press board door marked office, and as if by magic, the door creaks open. Inside, the office is decorated with a large cricket and formaldehyde and other freak show oddities. Two heavily tattooed women, Lekosia and Lygia, float about. Lekosia carries a snake around her neck. So if you need a lifeguard, <laughs> you can bet your life on me. <clears throat> Hello, Richie. 
<laughs> Richie is sprawled across a sofa. He bites a mouthful of grapes from a bunch and juice drools down the side of his lips. Cap and Shuby each sit in a tattered armchair. Little Jimmy Andrews. Please, be Richie's guest. And is this a stupid little boy or a smart one? <laughs> Richie, Shuby. <laughs> Richie fixes his gaze on Shuby. He snaps his sausage like fingers at Lucia, who gathers a jar of candy. She sits behind Shuby on the arm of the chair and offers him a taste. Take some candy, boy. <laughs> it's free. Shuby is frozen, eyes transfixed on the snake. Uh, first of all, Richie. <laughs> Thank you for seeing us. I, I know you're a busy guy, and I just wanted to say... You're wasting Richie's time. <laughs> Ask your favor. Right to business. <laughs> I love it. This guy right here, Shumi, he's the man. Lygia sits opposite of Lekosia on the arm of the chair, bookending Shuby. The snake slithers onto the petrified Shuby's shoulder. <laughs> We're in real trouble, Richie. I need to throw mother of all parties, and I need to do it quick. You're the puppeteer, man. <clears throat> no, you're the only one who can make that happen. How delicious. <laughs> <laughs> the lifeguard needs rescuing. <laughs> Richard thinks little Jimmy Andrews is caught in a riptide, and soon there'll be no one to save him. But it's not the rip that gets you, is it, little Jimmy? <laughs> it's the pen. Richie's words fall hard on Cap, but seem to turn his ladies on as they begin making out with one another. <laughs> Shuby, frozen in fear, is sandwiched between them. <laughs> Richie has always liked you, little Jimmy. Richie will help. Richie will take 40% of the gate, not a penny less. And Richie has one more condition. Yeah, name it. Sunny afternoon by the Kinks plays as flashbulbs pop and the sketchy employee snaps photos from an instant camera. Cap, Snag, Zeke, Boomer, Scooter, and Shuby all take turns in front of the camera. They're dressed in absurd clothing from Richie's store and directed to perform embarrassing poses while Richie cackles with delight. Dance, puppets! Dance! We fade to the cabin of the dirty dinghy. Cap enters, exhausted and still dressed in the neon boardwalk clothing. He flops on the bed. There, he notices an envelope marked J on his pillow. He opens it. Dear James, I wanted to say this in person, but because I can't be around you anymore, because you are a selfish bastard. I really wanted to believe it when you said you needed me. But you didn't need me. You needed an audience. <coughs> and what's worse is I knew, I knew what would happen, and I went along anyway. But I hoped this would be the thing you needed to give you that push. I hoped we would get James Andrews, captain of the TCB. Instead, we just got Captain Windmill. Selfish always comes with a price. And like you said, we're broke, so thanks for the memories. Cap folds a letter and stares blankly into space. <coughs> he knows this time she's not coming back. Fade to Babs's living room where she stares out her window, shrimp cocktail in hand. The scale model of the beachfront development sits on the coffee table. Thank you for coming. I thought your performance on the beach the other night, it was quite impressive. I happen to be in the market for someone who knows how to make a problem go away. Rob sits on a sofa with his feet up on the coffee table. Babs glares at him until he removes them. James Andrews believes he can still raise the money. I need him to be unsuccessful. Okay, Andrews is a fucking thug and I already squashed him. Perhaps, but he is not to be underestimated. 
His nonsense inspires hope, and I cannot have that. He is a threat, and I must see him stopped. Uh, <laughs> What's in it for me? Uh, when Andrews fails, and he will, my beaches will need new lifeguards. The Sea Squall Beach Patrol will take over. They will control half the beaches of the island. You will be named their new captain. Shrimp. Cut to nighttime at the entrance of Cap's Beach. A line of unsavory characters wait to enter. Boomer takes a $20 cover charge while Scooter stamps hands. The sketchy employee from Richie's keeps a close eye, using a clicker counter to keep track of the gate. Cap totters toward the entrance, holding a half-empty bottle of rum, wearing only short shorts and his American flag motorcycle helmet. Scooter! Scooter, what's up, what's up, what's up? Where you been, mate? It's a right piss up in there. Yeah, we could use a hand. Snag and Zeke have to grab more slaps from the bolo. I uh, have no fear. Captain Windmill is here. How we doing? Boomer shows Cap a wad of cash collected from the door. The sketchy employee watches like a hawk. Righteous. Let's take this up a notch. On the beach, the party rages on. A bottle full of rum is emptied to a tub full of jungle juice. A snake slithers around Lequisia's neck as she hands out red cups to the party goers. Rob stalks up to the table and buys a drink. Hey. hey. Excuse me. But, uh... <laughs> Is that a, is that a, it's a great snake you got there, it's, what is that, a python? Can I, can I pet it? Lekosia allows Rob to pet her snake while Rob fondles one of her facial piercings. I really love all the shit you got going on in your face. <laughs> um, <laughs> with Lekosia distracted. <laughs> Rob signals one of his SSBP mate, uh, BP mates. They dump a packet of white powder into the jungle juice. Thanks! Lekosia gives Rob the finger, which only serves to amuse him. He scans the party, pleased his plan is in motion. In the sea of lewd and unseemly people, he spots Cap. Huh. Hey, Andrews. Cap hears his name and realizes it's Rob. He throws the bottle of rum to the ground and immediately springs into fighting stance, then wobbles sideways before righting himself. Whoa, 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 Robbie, there, Robbie. I come as a friend. I just want, I just want to talk. I swear. Cap is skeptical, but joins him anyway. Lekosia ladles the juice into about a dozen red cups on a tray, and Lygia takes the tray out into the party. What do you want, Connors? I just came to congratulate you. Really, I mean, it looks like, <laughs> looks like you're gonna save your ass after all. You know what? You know what? Let me buy you a drink. Rob hands Cap a red cup. I have to say, you know, I admit it. Uh, you're kind of, you're kind of a true, true example of our uh, survivor. You know, like a what's the fucking word? What? Cockroach, like a cockroach. Uh -huh. you know? And I, I respect that. I do. You know what? Fuck it. To your beach. Rob taps his cup to Cap and exits. Cap is dubious. He mindlessly takes a drink and wanders adrift through the party until a well-groomed Shuby scampers up carrying a bouquet of flowers. Shoot, sir! Cap, I'm looking for you all day. Oh, I wanted to make an entrance. Cool. Those are the flowers. Are those for me? Oh, these? I was gonna ask Jessica out, but I wanted to see if you had any advice for us. Awesome, awesome. Who's Jessica? <laughs> you know, it's Jessica. JLB. Awesome! Those are for her. Can I see them? Shuby hands Cap uh, the bouquet of flowers. Cap chucks them into the crowd. He puts his arm around Shuby. Listen to me, all right? Girls don't want flowers. They don't want kindness. They don't want, you know. Hey, dude. Have a drink. Cap hands Shuby the red cup. Shuby takes a drink. You want to be cool? Lesson number... whatever the fuck. <laughs> Don't be such a pussy. Alright, watch this. Hey, you. Come here. 
Cap spies Gianna in the crowd and pulls her into his arms. Let's go party till our clothes come off. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> Cap takes Gianna by the arm and moves her through the crowd. Shubi seriously contemplates what Cap had to say. He takes another gulp from the red cup. Cut to Shuby's point, uh, point of view as he's making his way through the crowd. Everything starts to get fuzzy, distorted. The vibe of the party seems to have soured. Plenty of overserved, pugnacious behavior. Shuby walks by two agitated partygoers holding red cups who break into a shoving match. Jessica is standing near the shoreline talking with a couple of young, attractive male surfers when Shuby arrogantly butts in. You guys have badges? Because you know you shouldn't be on my beach. Are you okay? Yeah. I need to talk to you. Okay, give me one sec. No, 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 no. Dude, what's your deal? Whoa! What the hell? Come on, babe, let's hurry till the clothes come off. I don't know what this is, but I do not like it. She storms off. <laughs> no way! This time, Jessica doesn't turn around. She would be as regretful, devastated. He notices a rescue board floating in the surf. Meanwhile, on Cap's lifeguard stand, Cap and Gianna aggressively make out. Cap abruptly pulls away. Wait. I, I can't do this. <laughs> sure you can. <laughs> Gianna tries to ki kiss Cap, but he turns his cheek. Are you kidding me? What, are you homo or something? I, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, fuck off. Gianna angrily dismounts the chair. Cap takes a deep breath, tries to orient himself, and looks to the sea. He thinks he sees something in the distance. It's Shuby. He's passed out on the rescue board. Shuby? Shuby slips off, into the wall, uh, off the board and into the water. Shuby! Cap leaps from his chair and barrels through the crowd, trying to make his way to the ocean. But his feet weigh like anchors. As he nears the shoreline, he staggers and drops to the sand. From Cap's point of view, we see commotion, scattering, police lights, and the SSPP rushing into the water. Murph storms toward him. It's the last thing he sees. Fade to black. <coughs> Cap abruptly sits up from a bench in a small holding cell. Shoot me! The boy is fine, Mr. Andrews, which is more than I can say for you. Bab steps from the shadows outside Cap's cell. Don't you look awful? No doubt plagued by the feeling you let everyone down. Mm. Your friends, your squad, that boy. I imagine you must be feeling like, well, like a loser. <laughs> a fraud. Well, that must be very, very painful for you. No matter. You don't see it now, but believe me, this is better. Soon your beach will be private, and I'll have the investors I need for my new hotel. <laughs> Tidewater Cove will be a paradise. <laughs> you should take solace in the fact that soon everything on this island will be better. And it will be so much better without you. Bab swaggers off. Cap groans and lies back down on the bench. Fade to black. Fade into Cap, sitting in the cell with his head in his hands. A policeman unlocks the cell door. Murph enters. Let's go. How's the kid? Well, he'll have a headache in the morning, but he'll live. Squad. Home. Where you should be. You put in a shit sandwich were you thinking? I did what I had to do. Alright, we were gonna lose the beach, and we had the money, so now everything's okay. Uh, right? Are you shitting me? Not a thing you did was legal. I mean, for fuck's sake, the kid almost drowned. The cops think they put booze, they spiked the booze. Between the find you racked up in the bail? You're lucky to have anything left. You really screwed the pooch on this one. Uh, Murph, I... Doesn't matter. There's a council meeting in two days to officially shut it down. Murph, no. No, you... You have... Please. 
Go home, Andrews. It's over. Dissolved to the dirty dinghy, barely illuminated by a nearby street lamp. As Cap approaches, members of the SSPP emerge from all corners and surround him. Rob appears from the shadows. Cap thinks about running, but accepts his fate once he realizes there's no escape. He decides to strike first and throws a punch at Rob. It connects, but is ineffective. The SSPP guards restrain Cap. Rob takes his shots. Fade to black. We fade up on Cap's beach. It's dusk. Waves whap, uh, lap at a weathered lifeguard chair toppled on its side. Tidewater Cove Beach Patrol stenciled on its back. A sign now posted in the sand, warning, no lifeguard on duty, swim at your own risk. Back in the cabin of the dirty dinghy, Cap, bruised from his beating, lies on his bed staring at the ceiling. A knock on the door gets his attention. It's Shuby. Cap leaps from the bed and gives him a big, tight hug that Shuby definitely wasn't expecting. Shuby? Shuby, oh my god, buddy, you're okay! When was the last time you showered? <laughs> what day is it? There's no time. Right. Hurry up, get ready. All right, I have to go. Go no where? To the council meeting? Come on, come on, we have to save the council. We have to save our squad. What are you doing? Let's go, come on. I'm not going anywhere. It's over. Have you heard? What about Lesson 90? Just Meet the moment. Give me a break, kid. All right, that was just some bullshit I said to try to help him get you laid. What? What? Jesus, damn it, should we say something? That's cool. Shuby makes a hasty exit, leaving Cap to ponder his words. Later that evening at the Tidewater Cove Municipal Building, the council meeting chamber is divided, with the Tidewater Cove Beach Patrol on one side and the Sea Squall Beach on the other. Murph and Babs each represent their side. A smattering of locals, including Reggie, Rick, and Louise, fill out some of the seats. Councilpersons Samuel, Larry, and Ellen sit at the dais. An anxious buzz fills the room. Murph checks his watch. The doors swing open and the room goes silent. A dispirited Shuby walks down the aisle. He looks at Murph and shakes his head. Let's get this moving. I have a thing. <laughs> Meeting is in session to determine the future of the Tidewater Cove Beach Patrol. Mr. Murphy, in spite of this impressive list of violations, was the patrol able to secure adequate funding? No, Councilman. They were short about $10,000. What difference does it make? The, this latest act of depravity should be enough to prove that these Cretans do not belong here. Even their captain could not be bothered to show up. I propose that we move forward with my privatization plan. Fuck you, you cunt! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this community deserves better than these degenerates. I'll show you, degenerate! Yeah! <laughs> Things threaten to get physical. Councilman Samuel bangs the gavel, but it does nothing. Until the chamber doors swing open. Things slowly settle as Cap walks through the crowd and approaches the podium. He's in what barely passes as a suit, but he's trying. He's even wearing shoes. May I speak? The council recognizes James Andrews. A friend of mine helped me realize that uh, lately I've been a real selfish bastard. Language, please. Excuse me. Uh, Self-centered bastard. And I'd like to apologize. <laughs> my friends, my squad, and my community. I made it about me. I'm sorry. And, uh, and I quit. <gasps> No, I'm, I'm not essential. Without me here, there should be enough money to keep the squad for a few more weeks. Everyone should lose just because I did. Now hang on for just one second. Reggie stands to address the council. Now, ain't nobody losing nothing. Louise stands up. Because of you, we've had our best summer in years. Rick stands up and points at the council. He's done more for us than in the past few weeks than you ever have. Yeah. 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 
The rest of the townspeople stand in agreement. The council has cause for concern. We're not going to sit here and let you get rid of us one by one. The cat stays. Yeah! yeah. You yes. cannot be seriously considering this. You don't have the money. What about the races? What are you doing? I can't let it end this way. First prize is $10,000. We win the lifeguard races. Cap stays. Yes! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Councilman Samuel considers the request. Babs threatens him with an icy stare. Fuck it. She's a lousy lay anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Motion considered. Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Music plays as a montage sequence begins. The TCBP ready themselves for the big race. The training is disorganized. Boomer and Scooter fight over who gets to use the rescue board. When they're not training, Shuby mirrors Cap on the lifeguard chair, wearing sunglasses and expertly twirling his whistle. Jessica walks by and their eyes meet. She puts her head down and scurries away. Cap sees this is happening. At the dirty, uh, at the dirty dinghy, Frankie and Cap work to fix his boat. Frankie is fixing the engine while Cap hands her the tools. At the Sea Squall Beach, Rob and his squad trained like a well-oiled machine. And in Babs Richmond's living room, she's entertaining a small group of suited investors showcasing her scale model of the beachfront development. As the montage comes to a close, Cap stands at the shoreline focused on the ocean. He grabs his rescue board and paddles gracefully toward the horizon. We fade to dusk in Tidewater Cove. Cap and Shuby walk down Main Street. Cap is holding a bouquet of flowers. So... Flowers, <laughs> you know, I um, I never got a chance to apologize for what happened that night. I said some terrible things. And messed it up between you and your girl, and pretty sure I gave you a drug drink. And uh, oh yeah, it nearly caused you to drown. So you know, my bad. Make a pretty shitty Miyagi. <coughs> yeah. Still though, it's, this has to be the best summer ever. I got to play beach volleyball. I went to beach and parties. You committed Grand Theft ATV. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Like, for once, I felt like I belong. Uh, that was cool. Everybody learns. Got news for you, buddy. He's the coolest guy I know. Shuby closes his eyes and Cap guides him around a corner. Alright, where are we going? Did you sell me to Richie? Yes. <laughs> You're a carny now. I hope you like face tattoos. Okay. Shuby opens his eyes. It's the mini golf course. It's like something out of a fairy tale, perfect lighting created by dozens of flickering candles. Jessica stands under an arbor holding two putters. Shuby is delighted. Cap hands him the bouquet. Jessica, I'd like you to meet my friend Ben. Ben? Meet Jessica. Hi. Hi. Shuby hands Jessica the flowers. Cap playfully half covers his eyes and watches the new couple walk off, fade to black. It's the day of the race. The beach is full of spectators. The Tidewater Cove Beach Patrol and Sea Squall Beach Patrol are joined by the Harbor Crest Beach Patrol in the competition. Welcome to the 86th Annual Island Be Lifeguard Races. Five events to determine who is the top squad on the island. Swimming, tandem rescue, rowboat, line pool, and the jewel event, the 1,000 foot rescue board. The winning squad will get $10,000 courtesy of sponsor. 
The TCBP anxiously <laughs> milled about near the shoreline. The SSBP walked by, Rob with Gianna under his arm. They're laughing, taunting, and holding their fingers in an L on their foreheads. Cap can see his squad is nervous. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Come on, forget that. Don't even look at him. Look at me. You're much prettier. Yeah, hell yeah, you are, Cap! <laughs> Alright, come on, we're not gonna let the bad guys win, are we? No. No. Fuck no, mate. If those chunder monkeys want an argy bargy, I'll shove their noggin straight in their dunny and bugger them so hard that I'll shit a caracou! <laughs> What's that, Boomer? Now, who are we? TCPD! And what do we do? Take care of business! Our first race is the 1,000 foot swim. Zeke stands by the edge of the water smoking a cigarette while Cap looks on with Frankie. He looks over his shoulder and sees Babs with a small group of investors. She's staring right through him. You got this, right? I mean, wasn't Zeke like a uh, league champ or something in high school? Uh huh. Like 40 years ago. You're not helping. Cap walks to Zeke and massages his shoulder. Zeke extinguishes his cigarette. Hey. Oh, buddy, you got this. An official fires the starting pistol. The race is on. Zeke starts out strong, rounding the buoy in first place, but his wind gives out, and he's passed easily by the other racers. The SSBP celebrate their victory, followed by Harbor Crest. Zeke struggles out of the water, huffing and puffing. Oh, sorry, Cap. I lost my wind. I don't know how that happened. Zeke lights up a cigarette. <laughs> Smokes dry. Where does he keep his smokes dry? <laughs> <laughs> A leaderboard shows SSBP in first place with five points, HCBP in second with two, and TCBP in last with zero. The SSBP take their place atop the leaderboard. Up next, the tandem rescue. Cap sees Boomer and Scooter arguing on the shoreline over the rescue board and runs to break them up. Guys. Guys, 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 focus, what's the problem? Well, this Daphne Waker thinks he should be the rescuing, as if I need to be it's rescued! No, if you don't hand me that board, you crap. Guys, 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 this is my stop, stop! While Boomer and Scooter engage in their slap fight, the SSBP contestants, Pat and Duke, look menacing and ready to race. Guys, come on, come on, slow this! Fine! Boomer and Scooter play rock, paper, scissors. Scooter wins the first. Boomer wins the second, and on the third throw, Scooter takes the victory. Oh, fuck a duck! Where are you the victory? Story of my life, mate. Boomer whacks Scooter in the nuts and runs out into the ocean. Looks like London Bridge is falling down. We're gonna walk all over your Abbey Road. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Scooter? Thank you. Finish. <laughs> Scooter spits at the ground and puffs out his chest. He's ready. The starter fires the pistol and the race is on. Scooter is focused, though the other competitors are ahead of him. Matt is the first to the buoy. He and Duke start paddling in, followed by the Harbor Crest team. Scooter reaches the buoy. About time, you cunt. Oh, you're strong. Oh, you stick your ponies. Oh, they do, do they? Boomer climbs on and off they go, and they go fast. They are in perfect sync with one another. They easily cruise by the Harbor Crest and Ski Squall teams. The surprise causes the SSBP team to falter. Boomer and Scooter take first place, and the TCBP goes wild! Yeah. <laughs> Harbor Crest finishes ahead of Sea Squall. Rob charges at Matt and Duke when they arrive on shore. You screw-ups cost us fucking points! How could you lose to those lying bastards? Oi, fuck wits! Boomer and Scooter stand next to one another in front of the rest of the Tidewater Cove Beach Patrol. In total sync, they break out into a haka, a vigorous ceremonial dance used to display New Zealand pride, strength, and unity. The rest of the TCBP join in. We Kiwis, bitch! Yeah! <laughs> the Tidewater Cove Beach Patrol goes wild while the SSBP boils. Babs keeps a close eye while entertaining the investors. The tandem paddle win puts Tidewater Cove in first place tie with Sea Squall with five points each. Harbor Crest is in third with four. With the stunning upset, the TCBP moves into first place tie. Up next is the line pull, followed by the 1,000 foot row. Near the entrance to the beach, Matt and Duke sneak around the TCBP truck. The rowboat is on the trailer. Duke keeps a lookout while Matt takes a sledgehammer to the boat. At the race beach, the squad ready themselves for the line pull. Frankie is attached by a harness to a very long rope held by Sneg and Zeke. 
the CPR dummy spectates from her I chair. Believe this, I can't believe this. I can't believe we're tired. We may actually have a shot at this. How are you guys feeling? Ready now. <laughs> Ricky? Uh, swim out into the ocean attached to 500 feet of rope so these two yahoos can drag it back to shore? Yeah. Doing great. Perfect. Cat fiddles with the rope and harness. Why have we never used this? Frankie pushes him aside so she could focus. The official fires the starter pistol and the swimmers are off. Matt and Duke strut by. Enjoy your tug, losers. Matt kicks the CPR dummy, launching her head off her body. Daddy! No! <laughs> Snag goes berserk and has to be restrained by the entire TCB squad. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Listen to me. Listen to me, big guy. Listen to me. Use it. Use it. Snag understands there's a job to be done. He breaks himself from the restraint and paces back and forth like a cornered animal, staring daggers at the SSBP. You gonna be alright? This is a two man job. Okay, man. Okay, whatever you say. Zeke looks at Cap and shrugs. Snag's going it alone. The Sea Squall and Harbor Crest swimmers are neck and neck. As soon as they touch the buoys, they're immediately pulled back towards the beach. It's a grueling race. The Sea Squall and Harbor Crest team run back and forth to the shoreline, pulling their rope over the shoulders. Frankie reaches the buoy. Snag cracks his neck side to side. Go, 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 go! Snag snaps into action. He anchors his feet and pulls the line hand over hand. Frankie cuts through the water, easily passing Harbor Crest and Sea Squall to reach the beach in first place. The TCBP surround Frankie and Snag celebrating the win. Woo! But Snag breaks from the pack and mopes to Annie's head. <laughs> the mood almost instantly turns solemn as Snag drops to his knees, uh, scoops her up and sobs uncontrollably as he carries her from the beach. <laughs> Another shocking upset by the Tidewater Cove Beef Patrol gives them sole possession of first place. The line pull win keeps Tidewater Cove in first place with 10 points. Sea Squall slips to second with seven, and Harbor Crest remains in third with four. This is crazy. This is, this is crazy. I can't believe we can actually win this. All we have to do is win this next race, and the last one doesn't even matter. Boomer and Scooter run up to Cap. Cap, the boat! She's dead. What? What, 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 do, you, what do you mean she's dead? Someone popped a hole in her hull. Cat storms at Rob. Dude, what the hell? <sighs> you <laughs> fucked up our boat! Oh. Oh, man, what the hell? That is unfortunate. <laughs> but it actually wasn't us. We wouldn't dream of destroying another patrolman's equipment. Cat fumes. He gets the attention of the official. Hey! Hey, hey, our, our boat is shot. We, we can't race. We gotta postpone. Sorry, son. If your boat isn't seaworthy, that's on you. Shit! Rob gives Cap a smile and a wink. Sea Squall takes back the top spot on the leaderboard with 12 points, dropping Tidewater Cove, and they're 10 points down to second. Harbor Crest adds two points for a total of six. Sea Squall retakes the top spot with a win in the rowboat, dropping TCBP to second place. Next up is the grand finale, and it's for all the marbles. The 1,000 foot rescue board. Cap stands alone near the shoreline, trying to quiet his nerves. Babs leads the group of investors through the area. And this speech right here will be the crown jewel of our new development, once we've um, cleaned up the beach, of course. <laughs> Rob is jumping up and down near the shoreline in preparation. Babs excuses herself from the investors and slithers up to Rob. You had better not screw this up. Do you hear me? Otherwise, the deal is off. Keep your fucking tits on, lady. <laughs> Rob puckers a kiss at Cap. Cap is nervous. He tries to shake it out. Frankie eases up to Cap's side. What if you're right? I usually am. What are we talking about? I can't be. So what if you can't? What do you have to prove? God, you are thick. Look, okay, we know I'm not great at the pep talks, but um, a very inebriated man-child once told me that sometimes you can catch the wave, and sometimes the wave catches you. You gotta meet the moment. 
I love you. The crowd cheers as Cap Rob and Harbor Crest Racers get set. The official fire is and the competitors rush to the ocean with their rescue boards. A wave crashes in. Cap and the Harbor Crest Racer make a clean over, but Rob gets knocked back. He rights himself and paddles furiously to catch up. Cap has a solid lead rounding the buoy. Rob and the Harbor Crest Racer are neck and neck. As they round the buoy, Rob kicks the Harbor Crest Racer, catching him right in the head and knocking him cold. The racer slides off his board as Rob paddles to catch up with Cap. Cap can see the victory right in front of him. He turns to check his competitors. Rob is coming up fast, but behind him he sees the Harbor Crest Racer in danger. Without hesitation, Cap turns his board around and paddles back to the buoy. Rob passes him on the way. Cap leaps from his board, grabs the Harbor Crest Racer, and holds him up as the rescue boat speeds to help. The rescue boat pulls on shore, guards from Tidewater Cove and Harbor Crest assist. Cap paddles back into shore and is met by Frankie and Shuby. They watch as the SSBP continue their celebration while the Harbor Cove racer is helped off the beach. The SSBP point total is raised from 12 to 17. Final total, Sea Squall 17, Tidewater Cove 12, Harbor Crest 6. The race official stands on a makeshift stage with the microphone. Two women in bikinis hold the tournament trophy. Congratulations to the Sea Squall Beach Patrol, the 86th Annual Island Lifeguard Races Champions! Rob grabs the trophy from the women and takes the microphone from the official. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, that's right, baby! Champs again! And hey, Andrews! Andrews! Ooh, don't worry, I'll take care of the little beach beach for you, okay? Woo! <laughs> Babs catches Kep's eye and smiles a thin, smug smile. Excuse us! Gladys emerges from the crowd to the stage, followed by a pack of seniors from the auction. She snatches the microphone from Rob. Beat it, turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? Pardon me. <laughs> Everyone, can it! My name is Gladys. Some of you here already know me. We recently learned our neighbors in Tidewater Cove were in trouble. They were in danger of losing the things that helped set it apart. Like these lifeguards. Wouldn't be very neighborly if we were to let that happen. So, we are here to help. And to show our commitment to your town, we're going to donate $10,000 to the Tidewater Cove Beach Patrol. Yeah! Gladys drops the microphone. Rob fumes on stage and picks up the mic from the ground. Hey, hey, why, why are you celebrating these fucking losers? I won, okay? I won. I'm the winner. It's me. Me, Rob Connors. Rob Hello. Connors. Murph and two policemen appear behind Rob on stage. Yeah, you got to him, right? We'd like to talk to you about a certain beach party where someone drugged the drinks. <laughs> We'd like you to come with us, please. The policeman what? reaches for Rob. He pulls his arm away. Okay. What are you doing? All right, do it. The policeman goes to grab Rob. He tries to struggle away, still holding the microphone. Come here. Can you call my dad? I'm calling my dad! <laughs> Babs is leaving the stage, Rob points at her and screams it's her fault. The investors are shocked to hear that the accusation and decide to walk away. He's joking. It's a joke. Please, please, wait. Cap is surrounded by his squad, Gladys and her friends. Babs barges in. You. Oh, hi, Babsy. Yeah, it looks like we'll be sticking around for a while. It must be very painful for you. Babs angrily steps to Cap. She opens her mouth to say something, but no words come out. She composes herself and turns to storm off, but bumps into the overweight man in short shorts who spills his entire drink on her. Gladys sidles up to Cap. Just a good, deep dicky. <laughs> you are a national treasure. We dissolve to Cap's beach at night. A bonfire roars while Parrothead plays to a small party on the beach. The TCBP are gathered around a fire. Boomer and Scooter play rock, paper, scissors. Boomer keeps losing. 
Zeke sits next to his new male companion, Coco, near the fire. Zeke lights a cigarette. Coco takes it from his mouth and tosses it into the flames. Snag sits with one arm around the repaired CPR dummy Annie, complete with neck brace. In the other arm, he cradles a CPR dummy baby and proudly smiles at his CPR dummy <laughs> Shuby sits next to Jessica. They're staring into each other's eyes. He reaches over and takes her hand. Frankie smiles at the cute couple and gets up to walk to the shoreline. Cap is there, American flag helmet in hand, staring out to the ocean. Hey. Hey. So, Yelby and Shuby. Through Shakespeare. Quite a summer. Yep. You okay? You know, it's not every day a lifeguard gets to save a whole town. Yeah. You seeing Captain Windmill tonight? <laughs> To be honest, thinking about hanging up the old plants. What? Yeah. No. Sure. No. Go out on top, see what else is out there. This really annoying know it all once told me to grow up. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's time to start this time. But I'll probably be back next time. You? Oh, I'm definitely not coming back. <laughs> Growing up. Growing up. Cap and Frankie click their drinks together and walk back to the party. The helmet rests on the shoreline. It's surrounded by swash and swept into the sea. Fade to black. Inside the cabin of the dirty dinghy, Frankie abruptly sits up. Reveal the dirty dinghies in the middle of the sea with no land in sight. Shit! The end. <laughs> So we got about an hour left uh, before they kick us out of here. We got champagne, we got wine, we had a liquor store right next door. So <laughs> everybody hang out, we'd love to talk to you all to see how it went. And once again, thank you all for coming.